My dearly beloved in Christ, this feast of Christ the King is of recent origin in the church. It was established by Pope Pius XI in 1925. And he established it in order to emphasize the reign of Christ the King, not only in the hearts of those who love him, the members of the church, that our Lord must reign in our hearts, but also to promote the social reign of Christ the King. Imagine what it would have been like in the high Middle Ages, a time of history that historians look down upon as being backward and so forth. Imagine what it would have been like for there to be a Corpus Christi procession down the streets of the city, to hear all the church bells in the city ringing for Mass, for the people to kneel when the priest took Holy Communion to the sick with servers going before him with lighted candles, when the reign of Christ the King was publicly acknowledged in society. What a, what a wonderful thing that would have been to see religious walking down the streets two by two wearing their habits and to be surrounded, you might say, by the Catholic faith. That is what it was like in Europe in the Middle Ages. There were preachers such as the great St. Vincent Ferrer, St. Anthony of Padua, St. Leonard of Port Maurice, St. Bernardine of Siena, and so many others who would go into a village, into a city, and set up a platform in the square and preach publicly in the middle of the city and attract thousands, some of these great preachers, thousands of hearers who would come out to listen to their preaching. This was a time when Christianity, the Catholic faith, was acknowledged by society. Nowadays, we are told, if not in so many words, it is what is expected, it is the culture, to keep your faith to yourself. Keep it in your home, keep it in your church, but don't talk about it out in society. So our Lord has been, you might say, driven out of society. And this began, this change from what I mentioned about the high Middle Ages when you had that Catholic culture in society to what we have today, it began with the Protestant Reformation. And then it continued through the 17th and 18th centuries, the so-called Age of Reason. We had the French Revolution in 1789, and then there were similar revolutions in other countries in which the Catholic monarchies were replaced with republics, with secular governments. Then in the early 1900s, there was a great priest named Father Matteo from South America, who traveled throughout Europe, came to our country. I've spoken about him before, how he promoted the work of the enthronement of the home to the sacred heart. But he promoted the public acknowledgement of Christ the King. And as a result of his preaching and also of Pope Pius XI establishing this feast and publishing his encyclical on the kingship of Christ, there began to be erected in various places, monuments to the Sacred Heart. One in particular, erected in 1919 in the geographic center of the Iberian Peninsula, some 20 miles or so south of Madrid, on a hill called El Cerro de los Angeles. And it was a statue of the Sacred Heart that was about 100 feet high. And during the infamous Spanish Civil War, 1936 to 1939, the so-called Republican forces, who were Marxists, anti-Catholic, staged what they called an execution of the Sacred Heart. They stood there like a firing line, a group of soldiers with their soldiers, and shot at the statue to show their contempt, their hatred for the laws of God, the teachings of our Lord. And then they took dynamite and blew the statue up. And after the defeat of these Marxists in the Spanish Civil War, when it was finally concluded in 1939, 
The Catholics in Spain wanted to make atonement for this terrible blasphemy. And so they re-erected a new statue, once again, very high to the Sacred Heart. And as I said, there are similar statues in other cities and other countries where there was this effort. Because again, our Lord is King and he should be recognized in society and not just in our own individual lives. Pilate, who had been so vacillating before, finally put his foot down with the leaders of the Jewish people when they came to him and said, don't write in the inscription on the cross, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, but write, he said, I am the King of the Jews. And Pilate said, what I have written, I have written. And so once again, here, the weak, vacillating Pilate finally found a backbone and stuck with what he had inscribed. So over our Lord's cross, even though our Lord was in ignominy on the cross, suffering with his crown of thorns, his many wounds and hanging there from the nails, there was that inscription, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews, in Hebrew and Greek and in Latin. And that's why we have the initials I-N-R-I, which would be the Latin initials for those words on a, a crucifix. And note in today's gospel that Pilate asked our Lord, Art thou a king? And Jesus said, Thou sayest it, I am a king, but my kingdom is not of this world. And so today, as we reconsecrate ourselves to the Sacred Heart, let us remember what type of king our Lord is. He is a king of love. He is a gentle king. But he is a king who demands our obedience, our acknowledgement of his kingship, our loyalty to his holy church, to his laws, to his teachings, to his gospel. And remember those words, my kingdom is not of this world. Our Lord referred to Satan as the prince of this world. And we should ask ourselves, am I of the world or of our Lord? Remember what he said, you cannot serve two masters. And if we seek to be acceptable by the world, to follow the fashions and the styles of the world, to live and act like a typical worldling, then we're not really one of our Lord's loyal disciples our Lord, whose kingdom is not of this world. So let us live as faithful sons and daughters of Holy Mother Church, as faithful subjects of such a loving, gentle king, and prove our love and loyalty to him. And when we have that opportunity to stand up for our faith, even in the public marketplace, because Christ is our king, and we must never be ashamed of that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.